Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last video on combat, we covered the basics as taught by Captain Bernard. He covered all of the individual components of combat, ranging from the basics like swinging weapons, to more advanced concepts like combinations of master strokes. But they're all just building blocks. If you haven't watched it, it may be well worth watching first because the topics we cover here will build on those of the basics video. Today we want to discuss how you put those building blocks together into coherent strategies in order to actually win combat. We'll primarily focus on one-on-one -on -one battles, because fighting against groups is much easier when you understand how to win one-on-one -on -one fights. All combat begins with both opponents facing each other. Neither side will have advantage or disadvantage, so I'll call this the neutral phase. From there one side will attack and the other side will defend. There will be an exchange of blows and a return to the neutral phase. Rinse and repeat. Looking at it from a very high level, all combat is a repetition of this cycle until one side loses. This rhythm of combat is governed by stamina. Generally you can't defend or attack properly without stamina. You might have a little or a lot, depending on your attributes. You'll expend stamina to try and gain an advantage or to defend. Eventually, both sides will run out of stamina and have to pull back to recover. But keep in mind that different enemies will likely have different levels of stamina. That means that one side may well find itself out of stamina and at that point they won't be able to defend themselves properly. This will be most obvious against peasants or other low level fighters. Veteran warriors will have more than enough stamina and skill levels that one cycle won't be sufficient to decide the combat. That's where another aspect of stamina comes into play. The maximum stamina someone has is based on their maximum health, meaning that you can put enemies in an insurmountable position if you deal enough damage to them while taking little in return. Zero stamina also means that armor will not protect from damage, because unbroken armor deducts from stamina instead of health. Once stamina is gone, it's all health damage. At that point they won't be able to defend themselves any better than a peasant. <laughs> But there's a lot of steps between the neutral stance and a helpless enemy. The first thing to do is to gain an advantage and have the enemy on the back foot. That means getting a successful strike. One of the easiest ways to get the upper hand in the game at the moment is to master strike. Mechanically it simply involves timing the block button and you should be able to pull it off pretty easily with reasonable combat stats. You can simply sit back and keep doing this until your enemy is dead, if you want, but I'm assuming that anybody watching this wants to become good at combat. Another way is to grapple. You'll need good strength and perhaps even the perks that improve your grappling, but when you're able to reliably pull off grapples, they can be used to put an enemy at disadvantage. But let's not forget to mention normal strikes. We've already mentioned the feints and direction changes as the most effective ways to get successful strikes and minimize the chance of getting master strike. The first strike must always be a feint or at least a direction change. Combinations also have a guaranteed last strike. So the ideal is to start the first strike of the combination as a feint and finish it with the guaranteed strike. A more advanced approach to include in your first attacks is to use spacing. Watch a boxing or mixed martial arts match. What you'll see is the combatants moving in and out of range to tempt the opponent into a move that they can take advantage of. What you will not see, at least not often, is people simply standing still battering each other. The same applies to KCD combat. Don't just stand there, let the enemy batter you. I made a comment in the basics video about understanding the reach of weapons, and it applies especially to spacing in combat. If you're using a mace versus a polearm, then you're not going to be moving outside the range, unless you're not interested in hitting them at all. There's two ways to use spacing, defensively or offensively. The first is easy to understand. You cannot be hit if you're not in range. Moreover, if the enemy strikes and misses, they've expended stamina while you haven't. That represents a temporary advantage you can press, as we'll discuss in the next section. The second is not so obvious, but it involves using the enemy's own momentum. We can commence a strike while they're out of range that will hit when they move into range. The game makes this easier because it uses paired animations and it will cause such things to be easier to time than in real life. If you've ever seen an enemy seem to slide forward to hit you, then that's what's happening. The meme where the guard flies in with a kick is an extreme example of this. The NPC enemies can use it and so can you. Okay, so after all that you managed to get a hit in. Now what? Press the advantage. Push. Try and finish the fight now. Your goal is to do as much health damage as possible before you're forced back to neutral due to running out of stamina. Recall what we said about zero stamina. 
armor stops protecting you and you won't be able to defend properly. You want to hit the enemy as often as possible to first deplete their stamina and then their health while you have the advantage. Whenever I see footage of people in combat, I often see them step back into the neutral phase right after getting a successful strike or a very short while later. They do this well before their own stamina is close to being depleted. Don't do this. Keep pressing the advantage until you feel your stamina is getting low. When exactly that is depends on your own risk appetite, but it's definitely not right after one master strike. If you lean towards grappling, there's nothing stopping you from getting a strike in while they're stumbling and simply grappling them again. Repeat ad nauseum until they're dead. Using the stab attack in a grapple will keep enemies close. I call this a street fighting style. It's not stylish or even honorable, but it works well against single enemies that you know you can out grapple. But single enemies is the limit of this approach. Don't try grappling against multiple enemies because there's every chance that you'll get stun locked and end up dead. For a more conventional but more extensible approach, I recommend combinations. Once you have the advantage, every strike you do should be part of a combination. Not every strike will be a hit, but the blocks will eat away at their stamina too. If you do this right, the stamina should continuously remain low, and when the combination concludes, it should cause health damage. Chain combinations together and the enemy will soon be dead. But remember what Bruce Lee said. Or oh, don't hit back. Enemies aren't just going to stand there and let you batter them. They will counter and they will master strike. Getting master struck will happen no matter how good you are and how fancy your skills. KCD isn't Dark Souls, you can't do no hit runs. The solution is to have good armor and spare stamina to absorb the hit. What happens after is your choice. You can either regard this as a reset to the neutral phase and take the chance to recover stamina, or you can take it as a temporary setback and keep pressing the advantage. Counters are something that you can react to however, an enemy that blocks and draws back for a counter will look different from one that is not. It'll take practice but you'll eventually come to recognize this drawing back. The key is to know that it will happen at some point and be ready to block and do a counter of your own. You want to be able to maintain the pressure on them, but eventually your own stamina will run low. You'll need to be mindful of this, because getting master struck because you drive your own stamina too low will cause real damage. So don't forget to step back and allow your own stamina to recover. I've mentioned combinations as something that you should aim to be comfortable using, but it's worth pointing out that not all combinations are equal. Long swords are the weapons that have the most combinations, so I'll focus on them, but the principles apply to other weapons too. The first difference is the number of strikes needed to complete the combination. There's some with 3 and some with 4. The ones with 3 are the ones you should use for the first combination. The false edge that Bernard teaches you by default is great, because the first overhead strike is the longest reach and can catch enemies unawares. Another good one is Scar Maker, because it doesn't involve direction changes. After that first combination, you can choose whichever one you like, but a good tip is to use ones that target less well armored spots. A particularly good one is doubling, because it strikes the face. If the enemy does not have a faceplate, the damage can be substantial. Attacks against wrists don't seem to noticeably impair the enemy's ability to fight, as they imply, but they still strike spots that may be less well armored. There's also what I call resting combinations. These are combinations that allow your stamina to recover. There's two. The run through, which knocks the enemy down, and Wrath Strike, which has a long animation. You can use this when your own stamina is starting to run low. The ideal flurry is to start with a feint as part of a three part combination. Then do as many other combinations as you like, and as your stamina decreases, do a resting combination. Rinse and repeat until you've defeated your enemy. But of course, real combat doesn't develop that way, so don't forget to expect enemies to master strike and counter you. But with sufficient practice, you should be able to take this in stride. If you practice and understand all the concepts I mentioned, you should be able to defeat any enemy one on one in a stylish and entertaining manner. So get out there and battle some unfortunate souls. But enemies aren't just going to sit there and engage you in a series of one-to-one -one fights. So next time we'll cover some of the more useful things to keep in mind when fighting multiple enemies. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.